Hello, everybody. Hope you've been enjoying your spring break. Um, this lesson is probably going to be broken up into two videos. Um, so hopefully you have the link for two, littles, two, two videos. We're going to begin. So our last and final unit of the year is ecology. Um, in, eco in ecology, we study the relationships between organisms living in the same environment and also their interactions with the environment. So things in the environment could be sun, soil, nutrients, carbon dioxide, oxygen. So ecology sort of takes the organism as a whole and studies how it relates to other organisms and also the environment. There are three sections of ecology that we're going to be studying. Um, there's population eco ecology, which studies all the individuals of the same species in a given area at a given time. So for example, you could have the population of humans in Hartford. That would be an example of a population. Um, then we're going to move on to community ecology, um, which is the study of all organisms and in living in a given area, so how all organisms could be of different species, how they relate to each other. So for example, in a community, you could have cats and mice, and how do the cats and mice get along if they're living in the same area? How do they affect each other? And then last but not least, um, ecosystem ecology, which is the study of all living things and how they interact with the non-living things um, in their environment. So examples of non-living things, water, soil, nutrients. Um, in today's lesson, we're going to be focusing on community ecology because that's actually the easiest and most straightforward one. Um, when we get back from break, we're going to start with population ecology, which has sort of the last math lessons um, of our uh, course. And then we're going to be looking at ecosystem ecology. Um, we're going to do sort of a mock lab, which we won't write a full lab report up for, um, but a mock lab um, for that, um, for that um, unit. This lesson, like I said, is going to focus on community ecology. And here you can see a community of lots of organisms. Um, we have a dead zebra, a um, lion, looks like a hyena, like the hyenas in the hallway. And then we have, um, looks like a hawk. So this is a community of organisms, different species, living in the same area. And that, um, community ecology studies how these organisms interact with each other. Um, so we all just said this, but community is all the organisms that live together in one place. Um, and Eco community ecology studies the interactions between um, different species or different populations, I guess, of species in the same environment. So a role, the role that an organism um, plays in a community is called its niche. To sort of put this into terms that you that are more relatable, um, in Pathways, people have niches. So for example, my, my niche at Pathways is I teach science. And you could further, that's my role with Pathways, you could sort of further classify my niche as I teach chemistry and AP biology in room 412. That's my niche um, at Pathways. Organisms, um, similarly, um, have the same sort of niche in, in, in a community. Um, we'll talk about competitive exclusion in a second. But for example, tropical tree lizards, their niche includes sort of like the temperature that they live in, where they, what branches they live on, the time at which they are active and looking for food, and the type of insects um, that they eat. Um, the other roles that like organisms can, ser can serve in a, in a community is that they can be producers. They can, they can be plants, and their job is to take the sun and turn it into food. But all organisms have a partic particular role um, that they play in a community to make it stable. Um, there's this idea in community ecology that says no two species um, can occupy the same niche at the same time. And this idea is called competitive exclusion. Um, if two organisms are occupying the same role, um, they usually fight until one wins or one species wins and one species might be eliminated from the community. Um, this, for example, would be like, let's say, Miss Boiteau also wanted to teach AP Biology. There can only be one AP Biology teacher because there's only enough room and you know, we, don't, we only have 15 kids taking it. So me and her would have to like fight it out and then one of us would no longer be occupying that niche anymore. Um, but what can happen is that organisms can partition or split a niche. Um, in this example here, we have all these sorts of lizards who all eat insects. Their role in the community is to control the insect population. But you notice they do it at sort of different levels in the community. This role of this lizard is to eat insects on the, you know, in the high in trees. And this, the role of this lizard, um, I'm not going to even try to pronounce their names, um, is to eat insects lower in the, you know, on the grass areas. So if organisms occupy the same niche, they can partition it or split it. Um, 
and so they almost become more specialized at doing that job within the niche. Um, so for example, um, if Boitel really, really, really wanted to teach AP biology, um, she's actually studied ecology, more ecology um, in her schooling than I did, and I actually studied more biochem. So if we were going to split sort of the AP biology niche or role, um, we would do that, but I would teach sort of like the biochemistry and molecular biology, so the DNA and sort of um, photosynthesis and respiration. Um, and then she would teach the um, evolution and ecology sections of the course. That way we would split the niche or split the job or our role in the community. Um, this idea of splitting a niche um, is called resource partitioning. So there are, there are two terms that go along with this idea of a niche. So the fundamental niche is the potential um, the niche that the organism can occupy. So for example, with me and Boito, I could potentially um, teach all the people bio, and that is the niche that I actually do. But let's say we did split it, our realized niche would be the portion that the lizard, or me in this case, actually occupies. So for example, in the lizard example, the lizard could eat insects in all the tree branch levels. But that's its fundamental niche. But it actually ends up only, its only role in the, in the community is to eat the insects at the, let's say, the high tree level. So the fundamental niche is the niche it could occupy. Um, the realized niche is the one it actually occupies based on the role of competition um, in the community. Okay, so this is sort of the major, the next two things are sort of the major parts of this lesson. Um, after this part, we're going to take a, take a, I'm going to stop the video and upload it and then uh, do another video. Um, so in communities, there's something called symbiotic interactions. Um, how two organisms sort of classify how two organisms in a community relate to each other. Um, the first symbiotic interaction is called competition. And that's where there are two organisms or two species in a community are fighting amongst each other, and both organisms are hurt by the interaction. These could be two organisms competing for the same food source. Um, they're both hurt by sort of the interaction between each other. Um, now, there's also called another intera a symbiotic interaction called parasitism, and that's when one organism benefits. That's why we have the plus sign here. Um, and the organism is hurt. Usually this is a predator-prey relationship. So for example, um, with like, let's say rabbits and uh, lions, okay, like the rabbit is eaten by the lion, the lion benefits from eating the, eating the rabbit. Um, and the rabbit is obviously hurt when it gets eat, eaten. But those are sort of an example of a parasitism uh, relationship where one organism benefits and the other one is hurt. Um, then we have mutualism. And this is when both organisms benefit. Um, the classic example of, of mutualism is, is a lichen. And a lichen is actually a, a relationship between an algae and a fungus. Um, in this relationship, the algae and fungus actually live almost, they live like one organism. They live sort of closely embedded into each other, but they provide things for each other. The algae um, per, can do photosynthesis, so it provides food for the fungus. Whereas the fungus is really good at absorbing water and nutrients and can give that to the algae. Um, the fungus also provides protection for the algae. So sort of the, both are benefiting from this relationship. The algae can do photosynthesis and provide the fungus with food. The fungus is really good at absorbing nutrients. I'm um, going to take that if they're needed for photosynthesis, water, uh, nitrogen is also needed, and can give those nutrients to the fungus. Um, lichens, or I think they almost look like one organism. The fungus and algae are almost like embedded um, together with each, each other. This here sort of looks like an example. Um, the sort of the uh, orange thing is the fungus, and the sort of whitish green thing um, is the algae. They look almost like one organism. They're embedded um, with each other. Um, more examples of, of, of lichens, they sort of look like one organism. So then we have the last relationship that we have is commensalism. Um, and this is a case where one organism benefits um, and the other organism is not harmed from the situation. Um, the most classic example is barnacles and whales. Um, there, when you look at a whale, if you haven't seen a whale, um, barnacles live on the whale and they get sort of protection from the whale. And the whale is not harmed um, by the barnacles living on the whale. Um, the whale doesn't get any benefit, um, but, the, the, but, but it's not harmed. Um, and the barnacles get the benefit of sort of like living off the whale and getting sort of transportation and protection. Um, one of the things that your guided questions ask you to do is look up uh, more examples, not ones that I didn't give, of an example of uh, parasitism, mutualism, and commensalism. 
like another example of those sort of three relationships, real examples um, that exist. Um, but that's part of the guided questions is for you guys to look up other um, infinite examples of these. So at this point, um, so that's what this point is after the notes, um, you guys are going to look at examples um, of, I think I also have parasitism on the homework, but find examples. You only have to find one example um, of each of these. Uh, so I'm now going to upload this video and then uh, do another video that includes the uh, rest of the notes.